Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus, and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop, and I'm going all the way to heaven, so come on and join me on the road to freedom. at the Grand Canyon today. It is amazing. It is awesome. And I'm Christy Lefebvre. This is Mylon Lefebvre. Thank you for joining us on the Road to Freedom. And we've been uh, teaching you a Fruit of the Spirit series. And today is part four. It's the Fruit of Patience. And if you would like to catch up with us on the Fruit of Love, joy and peace. We have those available at our website at mylan.org and you can check that out. But let's start with Galatians 5, 22 through 23. It says, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes. That's so key. The work that God does within us. This is the fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You know, when I think about the fruit, what's important, you can know where you are is in a situation when you get squeezed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you get under pressure, yes, what yeah. comes out. Sure. And that'll let you know in what areas that you need to work on. And patience is definitely one that I am still uh at the top of my that list. we are still. <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we are getting stronger in every day in Jesus' <laughs> name. And so the definition of patience, do you want to start there? And let me say this first of all. When you get to the fruit of the Holy Spirit, notice that it always starts with love. Yeah. And I'm going to, I mean, there's nine fruits, and the first one's love. And, and if you love God and you love God, for instance, my wife, I love Christy. I can't really love Christy if I'm not patient with her. If I truly love her, I will enjoy her and I'll do everything I can to help her enjoy me being her husband. I will have peace with her and I'll be patient with her. So when we discuss patience, we're not talking about a, just a nice thing or a good thing. We're talking about, do you want God's best? Do you want holy matrimony? Do you want to get to a life of blessings financially? Because when two people are on the same page, they have the power of agreement in prayer. And then when you pray for the things, a home or a car, or the things that you need for you and for your children and for your family, then those prayers get answered when you stay in agreement. But in order to stay in agreement, we have to be patient with each other. Yes. We get tired. We get, I mean, we're doing 1,200 miles this week on motorcycles. We get up early. We film in the 100 degree sun all day. And then we get on motorcycles and go hundreds of miles and try to find the place to film the next day. You get hungry. You get hot. You get dehydrated. You get whatever. You get some good excuses to be impatient. <laughs> but that's all they are is excuses. So if we're willing, we can do this. By, only by the grace of God, only if he puts his super on my natural. Mylon, Mylon is not patient enough in the natural, 
but by the grace of God, if I'll submit to the Holy Spirit, I can do better tomorrow than I did yesterday. And you know, this is real significant. The first attribute of the love of God listed in 1 Corinthians 13 is love is patient. Yes. Amen. And so it's it's really key it to is. you walking in the love of God is yes, being is. patient. Well, let's read Webster's description of what patience is. It says the suffering of afflictions, pain, toil, calamity, or other evil with a calm, unruffled temper. <laughs> you can see right up front, <laughs> we're in trouble. Oh, help me, Jesus. Here's the next uh, uh, description that Webster gives. Endurance without murmuring or, fr or, fret or, or worrying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Endurance without griping and fussing right, and murmuring. Right. Number mm -hmm. two, a calm temper which mm. bears evil without murmuring or discontent. Yes. Number three, the act of waiting long for justice and expecting good without discontent. Oh my Meaning goodness. Meaning as you're waiting. As you're waiting, you exactly. You stay content, right. You stay content, Amen. you stay peaceful. The act, it is an action. Mm -hmm. It is not That's something good. we, I used to think, you know, when I was a new Christian, I prayed for everything. God give me patience. God doesn't give you, that, if he gave you patience, he'd have to make you be patient. We have patience, the ability to be patient. We just have to exercise it. Sometimes I do better than at other times, but if I'm not working on it, I'll never get to where God wants me to get. That's right. So that's why we're submitting to you today. Patience is part of the fruit that helps you to get to the place of goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, kindness, and self-control. Colossians 3 and verse 12 in the New Living Testament says, since God chose you, isn't that cool that God chose me and you? Yeah, amen. To be the holy people that He loves. That's what He chose us to do and be. You must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy. Now that's what we must do if we want to be the people God chose us to be. With tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And patience. Clothe now, yourself. Clothe yourself. Yeah, that's put good. that on, put on every on. day. Yeah. Do that. Use this uh, opportunity that we have to be like Jesus, because that's the bottom line. Yeah. If we are tender-hearted with mercy, if we are kind, if we have humility and gentleness and patience, or we can be like this baby crying in the background and demand our rights and what we want and scream and holler until we get it. Yeah. But we shouldn't be babies anymore. We should be growing up in the Lord Amen. and we should go on and go all the way with God and become mature Christians. Amen. Ephesians 4 and verse 2 in the NLT, I love the way this says this, always be humble, always be gentle, mm. be patient with patient. each other, making allowance for each other's faults because, because of your of love. love. Yeah. Man, I want to stop here for a That's second. It. Good. The reason we need to do this is in allowance because of each other's faults. We all have them. Mm -hmm. We all have faults. And if we don't make allowance for each other, then we don't really yeah. love each other. Right. According to this verse, mm -hmm. we do this. We always be humble. That means that your rights are just as important as mine. Yeah. And I don't think more of myself than I should. I'm just a guy and I'm one of the people Jesus died for, but I'm not more important than anybody else. I'm not better than anybody else or smarter or whatever. Yeah. I'm just a guy that needs the grace and mercy of God and the love of God. And let me tell you this, I am so thankful of all the things that I am thankful for. And, and God knows this is the truth. I'm not just saying this because I'm on TV. I am constantly amazed when I look back on my life how patient God was with me. Mm. Man, I would have squashed me. I would have sent me to hell. I would have looked at me those times that I prayed and said, God, if you'll get me through this acid trip, I won't ever take the dope again. I was lying and he knew I was lying. Yeah. He knew if, I, if he got me through that, that I'd do it again. Yeah. He knew how many times that I 
Well, anyway, I won't go into all the trash and my mistakes, but the bottom line is he was patient. Now, all he's asking me to do is be like him. Yeah. He's wanting me to cut you some slack, but we need patience with each other. Yeah. And thank God for his patience with us. My life is like a storybook. It's an amazing, true story about a country boy whose dreams all came true. My parents were gospel singers. When I was 17 years old, I had written a song that Elvis Presley had recorded, and he was the biggest star in the world at the time. Doors were open, TV and stadiums and coliseums. And for me, it was a dream world. I didn't know how to handle it. I'd never had any money before. I'd never had a lot of attention before. After meeting Elvis, I met the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Clapton and Dylan. And I mean, I was getting high with all these guys. And I got strung out, man. What I thought was a party ended up being like a pit of oppression and discouragement and depression. In 1980, the second chapter of Axe concert, I got born again and gave not just my problems, but my life to the Lord. You know, I had to quit rock and roll to get away from the drugs and the groupies and, and to live for Jesus. So my pastor gave me a job as a janitor at my church. We started a little band called Broken Heart. And we were just playing in high schools around Atlanta and, you know, just leading kids to Jesus anywhere we could. That group grew until uh, we headlined every Christian festival that we wanted to play in the world for years there and you know won Grammys and Dove Awards and and sold millions of records but the most important thing was we led a couple hundred thousand kids to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So I've written a book basically about my life. I believe the Lord told me to, that I needed to share what He has done for me with prisoners and with soldiers. I want to give this book to those guys that are behind bars, the guys who were angry and rebellious like I was, who now are in a hopeless place and without Christ. And so uh, this book is a simple book. It's about an hour and a half read. It's mostly pictures. There is a scripture, my favorite in fact, that says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and blessed is the man who trusts in him. A purpose for writing this book is to uh, help those people who don't go to church, who, who don't really watch Christian TV, but who need to know the truth that can set a man free. Luke 8 and verse 15 says, but it's for that good seed in the good soil. Now in Luke, he, Jesus is actually doing the teaching. And he's saying, if you want to get 30, 60, and 100 fold, then when the word of God comes into your life, it's got to land on good soil. When you hear it preached or you watch it on TV or you read the Bible, then what happens with the word of God? Does it land in adaptable soil? Is your heart, is your mind, Good soil? Teacher. If so, yeah. according to this, these the people who, who have good soil and are willing to adapt when they hear the Word of God and be doers, these are the people who, hearing the Word, hold it fast. Mm. Man, they hold on to it. That's good. In a just, noble, and virtuous, and worthy heart. They take that Word of God and they hide it in their heart. Mm. And steadily, it brings forth fruit with patience. Yeah. It takes a while. It takes a while for Mylon to stop thinking like Mylon and, and Mylon's granddaddy and uncles and, and the quarterback and Elvis and all the people who had any influence in Mylon's life. Uh, you know, it takes a while for me to get that influence out of my life and get the influence of the Holy Spirit. Yes, amen. And if I let God be my God 
and let Jesus be my Lord and Master. Then patience, kindness, gentleness, all this fruit will be produced and it'll be bought, brought forth in time. Not today, not tomorrow, but in time as I wait on the Lord and am patient. James 1 and verse 3 and 4 in the Amplified says, Be assured and understand that the testing of your faith brings out patience. The testing. Now, we've talked about tests before. There's only two things you can do. You can pass them, and you get to go to the next grade. If you're a freshman in high school and you pass all the tests at the end of the semester, then you become a sophomore. But if you don't pass all those tests, guess what? You're a freshman next year. Yeah. And the next year, and the next year. I mean, you can be the oldest guy in school in the freshman year if you don't ever pass the test. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians do that. Mm -hmm. Their patience gets tested. They have a temper tantrum. Mm -hmm. They do the drama queen thing. And the bottom line is they're in the same grade next year. Yeah. And God can't trust them with their master's degree if they can't get out of their freshman year. Yeah. You know what I mean? There comes a point where you understand that the testing of your faith, in other words, do you really believe that whatever God says is the truth? If so, you'll pass the test. Yeah. And everything's going to be fine. Amen. But Amen. Pa testing of your faith brings out patience. In other words, <laughs> for instance, you know, how do you get blessed financially? You bring the tithe to God. That first 10%, not 8%. It's good if you're giving him 8%, but you're still robbing him because the Bible says bring the tenth of all your increase into the storehouse. So if you do what he says, in other words, you trust him that God will make 90% of your income go further than 100%. Obviously, you have to lean on not your own understanding, but you have to trust God to right. get there. But if you do that, and then you sow that seed, once I give an offering into somebody's life that's in the ministry or into a ministry that God tells me to, if I send money to Jerusalem, to a church, or to a Moscow, uh, to a church, or to uh, an, another Brother Copeland's ministry, or some of the other people that I believe in, you know, how, when is that seed going to produce? When is that harvest going to come in? I don't know. I'm just smiling. Only God knows. But I know that if I wait on the Lord patiently with total yeah. confidence that God is honest. Yeah, harvest is guaranteed. Harvest is guaranteed, Amen. man. Amen. You cannot outgive God. Yeah. It's impossible. Amen. You keep giving, God will keep blessing. The end of that next uh, verse, 3 and 4, says, So let patience have full play and do a thorough work in you so that you may be perfectly and fully developed, lacking in nothing. Do you remember when uh, the Lord's Prayer talks about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, or in some versions say, I shall not lack. This is how you get to that place. Let patience have its full play. And you will, in other words, let the Lord shepherd your life. Let Him lead. I don't get to lead me, and I definitely don't get to lead Him. He leads me. But if I follow my good shepherd and I trust Him, He takes me, He lays me down beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He renews my strength. He renews my youth. He heals my body. He blesses my wife. He blesses our marriage. He blesses my child. He heals her body and my son-in-law. And he causes every good work to have no lack. This TV show, when we decided that it was the Lord and we were supposed to do this, I still don't know how to figure out how much it's going to cost to do 52 of these all over the world with a crew and hotels and plane tickets and all that stuff. But I know one thing. I won't have any lack if I'll do exactly what God says and hold fast to what He said to do and let this fruit grow in me, mm -hmm. then I know it's going to be good. You were going to share well, something, Well, I just think the key to patience, too, is that we don't know when God's going to do it and we don't know how. 
but we do know He's that he will do it. Do it. Yeah. yeah, and that's where the rest is. Good job. We do know that he watches over his word to perform it. That's right. He will accomplish that thing that his word was sent forth to yes. accomplish. Yes, Amen. He will, baby. We can rest in that. Thank you. That's Amen. good. Awesome. Now, Galatians 6 and verse 9 says, And let us not lose heart and grow weary in well doing or in doing right. For in due season or in the right timing and at the appointed season, we shall reap. Yeah. Not we might. Right, that's it. Not we hope this is going to work. <laughs> we were out shooting uh, our church on the run videos one time and we, we went through uh, Las Vegas. And I remember Michael Howell sharing about how, you know, a lot of people go to Vegas and they have a lot of hope. They hope when they put that dollar and the one arm bandit and they push that handle down that they're gonna get three <laughs> cherries or three lemons or whatever, you know, and, and hit the jackpot. But man, that's not what that's not the kind of hope that Christians have. We have a faith, a guaranteed God is absolutely good. He is absolutely wonderful. He is absolutely at all times kind and merciful and patient with us. And and we will get to reap that if we don't give up. Hebrews 6 and verse 12 says, We do not want you to become lazy, mm -hmm. but to imitate those who through faith and patience mm -hmm. inherit what has been promised. Yeah, that's good. Not being lazy, doing nothing, but using your faith, mm -hmm. speaking forth. I expect my seed to come to fruition. Yeah. I expect the goodness of God in the land of living. And not being lazy and just quitting. No. Just giving no. up. Right. If like we saying, need healing in our yeah. bodies, I expect, I, I ask him yeah. for it, and then I expect him to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what faith through patience causes you to inherit the promise. You want to close this out for us, my love? Yeah, and I love this passage in Romans 4, and it's, it explains what Abraham did while he was waiting for the promise of Isaac to be fulfilled. Yes. And it was, what, a 25 years yeah. he waited. Yeah. God had promised that he would have a son in his old age, and from the time of the promise till Isaac was born was 25 years. And in in that waiting period, here's what Abraham did to stay strong. It said, no unbelief or distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong and was empowered by faith as mm. he gave praise and glory Thank to God. You, so while you're waiting, one of the things that'll keep you patiently waiting is Good to Lord. continue to give praise and glory to God. He was empowered mm. by faith. Yeah. As he, as he praised and God. gave glory to God. Amen. Man, we're so thankful that you allowed us to share Jesus with you today. I believe you're going to be more patient than you've ever been before. I know I'm going to try to get there. I'm going to believe God for it, and I'm going to exercise my faith today, and I'm going to give praise and glory to God, and I praise Him for you. I praise Him for His goodness to me. I praise Him for the, for the magnificent opportunity to be out here at Grand Canyon today with my closest friends out here just worshiping Him and, and loving on each other. And, and we love you, and most of all, God does. We don't know your names, but we're praying for you. We're believing with you for His best. In the meantime, you just stay in the Word and believe God with us. Have an awesome day, and don't forget to stay on, on the, the road, road to freedom. freedom. got a chance to see and spend a few minutes with our mother and father in the faith, brother and sister Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, and uh, they shared some information with us that was so precious and so sweet. In the next few days, we're going to be just rolling some of those clips. We filmed some of it. We didn't film all of it, but we did film some of it. So we're going to let them share some information with you. It's going to be a blessing to you. Yes. So just keep it tuned in the next few days. We're going to have a good time. We're going to do some great Bible study. We love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Now, we were talking 
earlier about making right choices. Now, there's a difference between desiring to be healed and tired of being sick. There's a lot of people like to be healed. Sure. They're just tired of being sick. But they don't ever do anything to get healed. There are people praying. You were praying. You were seeking God. Reaching out for your healing. You'd made a choice. You said to God, if, if you don't do something about this, I'm going to have to quit what I'm doing and I'm not willing to do that. Yes. Now, I'm, I need to know here. I need to know what to do here. Yes. That's all at that time you knew how to pray. Mm -hmm. And he met you right where you were. Yes. Now, the person that has a desire to be well, that's not just being no pain. You can, you can be no pain with enough dope. You can stop the pain, but that ain't being well. That's just not being hurt. But when you have a desire to be well, wellness is to be well spirit soul and body mm -hmm. and financial mm -hmm. you you're not you're not well until you're well financially that's wellness in god and you choose to be well yes. now when you do you're going to have to start making some choices cool. let's go back to our verse of scripture there and make sure we we, we know that this is just exactly what God is saying, he said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have, I have, I've already done this. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, you choose life and that both you and your seed may live. Now, why would that have such an effect on your children? Because you're going to teach them how to live. Yes. Children grow up learning how to be afraid. They learn how to talk from their parents. And if your parents don't know how to talk, it'll kill you. Because the power and authority of death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now that's God that said that. And whether you like, whether you really like that or not, hey, that didn't have nothing to do with it. Whether you like it or not doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's what you do about it that yes. changes. Yes. Now, I have to make a choice about what I think. I have to make a choice about what I see. I have to make a choice about what I say. I have to make a choice about who's running my life, me or God. Mm -hmm. Choose God. Thank Choose you. His way of doing things yes. because you are His righteousness in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Hope you enjoyed today. We're going to pick it up tomorrow with some more information from our uh, parents in the Lord, brother and sister Copeland. So I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Stay tuned. Tell all your friends to join us. See you.